On April the 6th, the Sultan pitched his red and gold tent outside the city walls. The defenders of the city awoke to a chilling sight as they looked out over the Ottoman camp. They were outnumbered by 10 to 1. At the heart of the Sultan's army was an elite corps of Muslim converts, the Janissaries. These zealously aggressive troops were recruited as children from the Ottoman Empire's most warlike states, Bosnia, Serbia, and Albania, to wage this holy war against Constantinople. Mehmet gave Constantine one last chance. He sent a message under a flag of truce to the city. I will, as the law commands, spare you, the citizens of this great city, harm neither your families nor your belongings, if you voluntarily surrender to me. Constantine rejected the ultimatum. Mehmet attacked. Against the odds, Mehmet's troops were turned back. The first victory went to Constantine. Stunned by this defeat, the Sultan was forced to change his tactics. He brought in artillery to destroy the city's massive walls. Most impressive of all was a giant cannon, the largest gun ever made. It was an astonishing 29 feet from muzzle to breech with a 26-inch bore and fired a half-ton marble cannonball more than a mile. It required 60 oxen and 400 men to use it and took two hours to load. The cannon enabled the Ottomans to fight with the most sophisticated piece of weaponry in the world. More than 60 large cannons were cast in temporary foundries outside Constantinople. An eyewitness wrote, the assault continued day and night, with no relief from the clashes and explosions. For the Sultan hoped to take the city easily, since we were few against many, by pounding us to death. He allowed us no rest from the attack. With continuous salvos, the Ottoman cannon breached the wall in several places. But the Byzantines defiantly fought off the assaults and repaired the walls. Mehmet then built a huge siege tower, only to see it burnt to the ground by a small raiding party from inside the walls. Twelve weeks into the siege, neither the artillery barrage nor the attacks by the Muslim army had been successful. The Sultan's army was on the point of deserting, and he was forced to rethink his strategy. Until now, he had only been able to attack small sections of the wall that were easily defended. Most of Constantinople was protected by the sea. On the northern side of the city, the Christians had stretched a great chain across the mouth of the Golden Horn, thus blocking access to the city's harbour. Mehmet in a moment of genius, bypassed the chain by hauling part of his fleet across a narrow stretch of land. Overnight, they brought 30 ships into Constantinople's protected harbour. As dawn broke, the Christians woke to discover that the Ottoman war fleet had surrounded the city. The Christians were devastated and morale collapsed. But Emperor Constantine stood by his decision to defend his city to the last. How could I leave the churches of our Lord and the throne in such a plight? What would the world say about me? I pray you, my friends, in future do not say to me anything else but 
Nay, sire, do not leave us. Never, never shall I leave you. I am resolved to die here with you. But now, completely surrounded, the defenders had to spread themselves along the entire length of the city's walls. It was an impossible task. At this moment, Mehmet used another brilliant tactic. He aimed all his cannons at the same section of the wall. Within a month, the walls began to crumble. With victory in sight, luck also played its part in securing the Ottoman victory. The lost tomb of Ayo Pensare, friend and fallen disciple of the Prophet Muhammad, was found by two Janissaries close to the city walls. This was taken as a good omen for an Islamic victory. The Christians received different omens. Their tradition held that the city of Constantinople would never fall while the moon was in the heavens. But on the night of the 24th of May, there was a full eclipse of the moon, bringing three hours of darkness. An evil omen indeed. Four days later, shortly after sunset, the last Christian liturgy in St. Sophia began. The emperor arrived just before midnight and there made peace with God before returning to his post on the city walls. The prayers continued throughout the night and the church filled with refugees as the sound of Ottoman artillery grew ever more intense. commander wrote the reports of muskets the ringing of bells the clashing of arms the cries of fighting men the shrieks of women and the wailing of children produced such a noise that it seemed as if the earth trembled Night gave way to day, word came that the walls had finally been breached. Soon, the first Ottoman soldiers forced their way into the cathedral, bringing to an end 1,000 years of Roman history. The last outpost of the Roman Empire, Byzantium, had fallen. 